Welcome to Dying Generation. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... Stephen Scott Norfolk. What's going on, man? Not much. Just, uh, you know, dealing with drama. Roommate drama. Total, complete and total freak out. I had to move out of my apartment for a couple of days, and then... Uh, Finally got things worked out and moved back in, but, you know, don't know how long the piece is going to last. What what kind of drama erupted? Well, my roommate seems to think that the local Jewish community is after him. Okay. And uh, freaked out thinking that I informed to the Jews. So there was a bit of tension here. I thought I was going to have to knock him the fuck out. That is at least a little bit more interesting than your normal kind of drama. Yes, it is. It's not your. It's not your regular. You ate the last of the margarine. Yeah, it, it's not the asshole upstairs stamping on the floor because my he thinks my music is too loud kind of stuff. Yeah. No. Well, I've heard your uh, music. So that your uh. roommate thinks that there is a Jewish conspiracy out to get him. Yes. And you're somehow, you know. Well, yeah, what happened I, was what happened was I don't live in that situation, dude. But that's almost almost kind of worth some drama worth going through. <laughs> Just because <laughs> here's a story you got for the rest of your fucking life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but basically, what happened was this: he was living somewhere else, and his passport disappeared. Yeah. And uh, then all of a sudden, about two and a half weeks ago, his passport shows up in his car. Okay. And stuff. And so he's convinced that the Jewish community put it in there to let them let him know that they know where he is. And he figured the only way they could find out where he is is if I told them. So Okay. So basically the Jewish community is kind of like the Easter bunny? No, it's 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 kind of like the mafia. They'll take your they'll take your stuff and and hide it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Where you and then you have to go it. look for it. Yeah. W- was it decoratively painted when you found it in this car? No, it was not. There was no basket, no eggs, nothing. Yeah. So and for for what reason would the Jewish community be after him? Uh, I'm thinking psychosis. Yeah. And more importantly, and what I think may be a bit funnier, <laughs> how did you manage to convince him that you are not a part of this Jewish mafia? Well, because I, I told him a couple of simple facts. One is that he supposedly had an apartment of his completely destroyed by them. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I'm half responsible for the damages on this apartment. I said, why would I want to bring them here? Yeah. You know, for one, and I said, and the other, they could have found out about you. I said, because whenever we were, we hadn't even signed the lease on our apartment yet. And because the woman had filled out the paperwork for us to lease the apartment, it showed up on an apartment report. Right. I said, so anybody in the realty industry could find that information within seconds. And so he calmed down and. We're back to being buddies again. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did his video game machine break that made him go psychotic? His, no, his video game machine is still working. That's his oh, drug okay. of choice. And stuff, so, you know, that's how it is. Uh-huh. But, yeah, but, uh, you know, I was uh, saying if I, uh, you know, I get my first check from Social Security Disability here on the 17th, <clears throat> and if I get the back pay that I was supposed to get for the six months uh, and anything else goes on here, I might just buy an RV and move back to Colorado. So when do you think that might be? Huh? When do you think that might be? I don't know, sometime in the next couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. And stuff, so we'll see. Yeah. If not I'll I'll come visit and we can partake. Because I do have to tell you how the Christians have been after me and they have been 
improving my stuff, and it has been brightly colored when I found it again because that's really more their style. Yeah, it is. You know, so, the whole Easter thing. Yeah, just 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 a heads up. <laughs> Yeah, now my thing that well, my brother's thing is this about Easter. So, so what's so what's the deal? Okay, Jesus, they they he dies on the cross. They bury him in this uh, tomb. They roll a stone across the opening of the tomb so that nobody can steal his body. And then Easter morning, they show up. The stone has rolled away from the opening of the tomb. Now, if Jesus walks out and sees his shadow, is there three more weeks of winter? Uh, there usually is. I'm pretty there sure. Usually is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to know. I, I've actually been fighting at, fighting the fight to try to convince Christians on Facebook that there is no war on Christmas, and that you're really kind of being dicks. Really, Christians, dicks? That's I don't know. That doesn't sound right. And let the flame war begin on our Facebook page, ladies and gentlemen. It, it's surprising. Now, yeah, now a, a, a couple of people, and I've been tempted to go after this, a couple of people have have uh, posted a picture of Jesus saying that, oh, many people find this offensive if you don't share it on your wall. And I was kind of thinking of, I would take that and say, like, this is not offensive. It's just a picture of, you know, a picture of Jesus. And then have yeah. a picture of the West Pro Baptist Church next to it with God hates bags. And frankly, a lot of other shit that yeah. I can find. Like there was yeah. a congressman, I forget where he was from, that says only Christians have rights in this country. Yeah. That's a fucking congressman. But then I started mm-hmm. thinking about it and I was like, you know what, that picture is fucking kind of offensive. Because it's not Jesus, it's the Aryan view of what Jesus looks like. Yeah. So, you know, post Nazi Jesus if you want. Yeah. I, you know? Yeah. I, Where's my black Jesus? I want my black Jesus. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a happy holiday, isn't it? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Now, what I think is yeah. funny, too, is is this. <clears throat> you have, you, have uh, you know, Muslim terrorists, very small right. portion, very small portion, minuscule portion of the Muslim community. You know, committing these atrocities, and we should kill all Muslims, right? Okay, well, what about the guy in downtown Austin who was shooting into public buildings who was a Christian fanatic? Because of his actions, should we then condemn and kill all Christians? There was also this guy, I forget where he is, I could probably find him again, uh, who made a statement to his church that that he wants them to kill all homosexuals by Christmas. Yeah. Well, there you kill go. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yep, there you go. And that always kind of makes me think, like, gee, why is your God such a big policy? <laughs> Why is your God just afraid of fucking everything? Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, you know, I don't know. Maybe God spent some time in prison. <laughs> you know? You never know. And, and you know, anal rape is no pleasant thing. Uh, you know. It's like I had this friend of mine, this friend of mine yeah. who's uh, this friend of mine who's gay. Uh, we saw uh, Pulp Fiction for the first time, and 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 the and the black guy gets is getting ready to get ass raped, right? Mm-hmm. And my friend who's gay is like, like getting fucked in the ass is the worst thing that can happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you enjoy it, I don't know. Ask a woman how she feels about being raped in her pussy. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I think I think rape is rape. You know. And uh, regardless of whether you enjoy anal sex or not, if somebody takes you by force while you're, you know, tied over a four by four or whatever it was in the movie, uh, you know, it's probably going to be an unpleasant experience. True, true. Uh, uh, unless you're unless you're paying a premium for that, you know. Exactly. You know, I mean, you know, 
if you if you pay for that, you know, then fine. You know, if you're into that, fine. But if you're not, yeah, it can probably be a pretty uh, unpleasant experience. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But then again, you know, the prostate is the male clitoris. Women out there, if you don't know that, you should get to know it. <laughs> Live it, learn it, love it. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No shoes, no shirt, no dice. <laughs> but uh, so how have things been going with you? Um... The computer crapped out. I'm just getting it back up and running today. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, oh, I hate. I, 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 I can't really express how much I hate Windows 8. Okay, so they have for Windows 8. They are very proud of the fact that this is the fastest booting computer. Fastest booting operating system ever. Yeah. Okay. You know what that means? That means that when you're having problems and you're trying to get your computer fixed, hitting the F8 key does not work anymore. It's it's like playing Dragon's Lair. Exactly. You don't you don't hit that button at the just the right second. You know your your fifty cents is gone. <laughs> It's still there. It's still a command. It can still technically work. But how many times are you going to shut your computer off and on to, 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 hit to, that. Get to that? Yeah. Now, after much fucking around, uh, so so I got to a point because I was not able to get into the operating system at all. So I was like, well, what I'll do is I'll load up Windows 7 which will give me enough of an operating system to get in there and get the shit that I inevitably wind up leaving on my desktop. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. And then I could play around a little and see if uh, Windows 8 drivers will work under Windows 7. Yeah. Which they might. I don't know. I know there are no Windows 8, there are no Windows 7 drivers for my computer. Yeah. Which is really fucking annoying. But really, you know, how, how much of a difference? I mean, isn't most of this cosmetic and annoyance? So a Windows driver should, a Windows 8 driver should work on the Windows 7, I would think. Ah, uh, you never know. But I'm in the BIOS, and there is no way to change the fucking boot sequence. Really? So I can't, so I can't boot to a CD anymore. So it's relying strictly on Windows. To allow you uh-huh. to to boot from a a disk. Uh huh. Wow, that's nice. Thank yeah. you, Microsoft. Well, now not Microsoft. I, Thank you, BIOS maker. Now <clears throat> I did wind up like lucking into something in the BIOS, which did eventually force it to boot directly directly to a recovery console. Mm-hmm. But there was nothing in the BIOS saying that that is what that function would do. I was at the point of desperation where I was just hitting buttons and shit. <laughs> yeah, you were in there and you saw something that said ice cream was sprinkled, and you're like, well, fuck it, let's try it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so that's that's that little uh, I hate my computer spiel for this week. Yeah. Uh, it's well, I just bought a... Go ahead. Go ahead. Completely no, it's completely out. redone now, and I'm just I'm just working on reloading the software, getting my websites up, getting the passwords in, just get that that kind of crap. Yeah, you just recently bought what? A Windows 8.1 tablet, 8.1 an eight-inch tablet by by HP yeah. called Scream. Okay. For <laughs> one hundred one hundred and fifty-eight dollars for a Windows 8 tablet. Not Very nice. It's it's only got one gig of RAM, but it's got 32 gigs of storage and a quad core processor. Runs yeah. very nice. Runs all the uh, you know the newest software. I've got Office on it, 
and, uh, you know, get it, and I start playing with it, and then suddenly realize that, you know, a tablet is pretty much useless without an Internet connection. <laughs> you know, and a keyboard. I need a, I need a keyboard because the uh, little keyboard on the screen is, 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 you know, touchier than a 13-year-old girl under period. Yeah. It is just, you know, you, you go to touch a letter once, and it's like, you know, www. Yeah. You have and not stuff, been able so. to get your uh, internet connection back yet? No, I haven't. I'm uh, checking into a couple of options. I don't want to go with uh, Xfinity because I owe them like $260, and frankly, I don't have it. Yeah. You know, if I get the if I get the big bundle of cash from the government, then uh, then I'll probably get it. But I'm probably going to go with somebody like AT and T or somebody like that. Yeah. And stuff just to get the interwebs. And I got a uh, USB keyboard I got to try and use on my laptop because the keyboard on my laptop died. So I can try and get everything off of my laptop onto my little server unit. Yeah. And so, so, you know, computer fun, computer fun. Exactly. Mm hmm. Always. So, fun. yeah, having a good time with that. So I had a little uh, interesting uh, filmmaking stuff happen recently. Go for it. Okay. Can't, can't name names or anything, but there's a production company from Los Angeles that's interested in one of my scripts. And uh, the guy had to – well, didn't have to drive. He loves to drive. And so he drive out, drove out here from California to go to Dallas to finalize the paperwork with his business partner. And uh, his son lives here, so he decided to drive down and visit his son and then meet me with me in person. You know, he brought another this young producer with him, and, and we had a nice lunch, and uh, you know, had a really good conversation and stuff. And uh, seemed like things were uh, you know getting locked down and stuff. And then uh, you know, I messaged him you know about an hour after we had lunch and said, "Hey, it was you know really nice meeting you, and looking forward to working with Like Minds." And he sends me back this text message that says, "Yes, it was nice meeting you too. You seem really laid back, or really easygoing. Hope." to work with you in the future. What the hell do you mean? Hope to. I thought I thought we were close to uh you know some kind of deal here. <clears throat> yeah. And stuff. But you know if it works out cool. If not I'm still moving forward with a uh putting together a lower budget production. because uh, he was talking about a million dollar budget for it. Yeah. And stuff, which would be cool, but you know, I could probably get it done for about seventy-five or one hundred fifty thousand. So, still moving forward, uh, putting that together to you know get people interested in stuff, and <clears throat> putting together, still working on putting together a production of uh, another horror script uh, that I have. Uh, that's probably going to cost about thirty thousand. Uh-huh. And uh, you know, just uh, trying to trying to move things forward. How about you? Which one's the horror script? The horror script is Shape of Madness. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shape of Madness is the horror script. The other one is a drama called Empty. You think only 30000 for for Shape of Madness? Uh, probably, yeah. I mean, we haven't gotten a figure on the, uh, <clears throat> on the uh, digital effects yet. Yeah. Uh, but the script has changed to where it's pretty much one location for the entire film. Uh-huh. And so, therefore, to be very cheap, the cinematographer, the director of photography was telling me that he could just go in and pre-light the entire set. And we just shoot, 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 and, you know, set up key lights when we need them and stuff like that. Uh, so he said it should be a pretty quick shoot. He said we could probably make it in about 10 days. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we'll see what happens. Cool. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I got a GoPro. Ooh, cool. Does yeah, that mean you're going to be doing some snowboarding? Of course. <laughs> you, you know, you can see, I, I just have the body for that. You do. You're smells. I, I was born to snowboarding. So... <laughs> Uh, uh, no, uh, I'm, I'm mostly planning on using it to attach to my cat. Ah, oh, cat cam. 
Yeah. And see if I can get out a show that is popular with Crazy Cat Lady set. There you go. You can be the cat. You can um, live vicariously. Yeah. Uh, so there's that. <clears throat> I am working with a fake relative of mine to try to get a, another podcast up and going. Yeah. I don't even know what she is to you. <laughs> Why? What do you mean? Second, second, it, it, Jeannie's second cousin, which makes her basically a complete fucking stranger to me, I think. Yeah, so it does until you guys get married. Once you guys are married, then she becomes a legal relative. Um, and that one is going to be called Destination Utopia. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the more political show. Yeah. Because she really likes to get out there on Facebook and just bust balls like no one you've ever seen. I get the subject <laughs> out of her. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, like, like she, she is a part of several, uh, Christian groups. Yeah. Just so she can get in there and fuck with them. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So the idea is that we will dream up what we think our perfect world is without any kind of barriers or anything like that. You know, like, like the whole idea of, well, that can't be done, just won't exist. Because we're just making this shit up. Like, yeah. wouldn't it be great if the world was like this? Mm -hmm. You know, what if we didn't have to work? What if we didn't get sick? You know? That's what communism. That's communism, Bunny. Stop, stop talking communism and socialism, man. Uh, if fucking, fucking communism fascist. and socialism bother you, you can tell us about that on our Facebook page. Just do a search for Dying Generation, and you can call us communist pinko bastards. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but well, before you yeah, do, do so yourself is, a favor. So communist. What fucking difference does it make? Before you call us communist pinko bastards, first read the okay. Communist Manifesto so that you actually know what communism is. Because socialism is not communism, and communism that we've seen or things we've seen called communism in this world are not communism. So do everyone you a favor also, and read that first. And while you're at it, you might as well read up about capitalism, too, to find out how most of the people in this country are not capitalists, are never taught to be capitalists, and only a handful of people in this country are capitalists. Yeah. You have to have capital to be a capitalist. Mm -hmm. We do not get to have capital. We do not get taught in school how to get capital and how to work the capital system. We get taught to be consumers. Mm -hmm. No, you have to get the rich what, dad, poor dad uh, series of books in order to learn how to raise capital. <laughs> We we get taught how to be consumers, which is what capitalists need to make money. Mm hmm Well, here's here's an interesting point, capitalism-wise. The price of gas is dropping, right? <clears throat> the price of oil is down to like yeah. sixty-one dollars a barrel, so rapidly that the stock market is 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 dropping, oh. and so. <clears throat> The the collapse of the oil industry will be the collapse of the American economy, and people who are bitching that Obama didn't do anything about oil prices are going to be bitching that Obama did something about oil prices and collapsed the economy. <laughs> uh -huh. So, and me and my brother were talking about this the other day, is that you know everybody's like, oh, uh, credit credit built this country. No, credit helped the rich. Um, but credit has completely and totally destroyed the middle class and the poor in this country. It is, it is, it is what all keeps us wage slaves in this country is, is credit. So if you have credit of any kind other than like a home mortgage or a car payment, get rid of it. No credit cards, no finger hut, no rent a center. 
uh, that is killing you. Uh-huh. No payday loans. Don't do any of that stuff because that's just killing you and uh, destroying destroying the middle class and the poor in this country, and and keeping us all you know down. Mm-hmm. You know. So that is basically what that show will be. We will go through current events and what's going on in the world, and is that bringing us closer or further away away from utopia? Yeah. Cool. That sounds good. You know, like I kind of think that oh, cops are shooting way too many people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, yep. everybody likes to focus on one issue. You know, well, this guy might have done this, and this guy might have done this. And here's the thing that I keep hearing that really pisses me off. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't know what really happened there, so we really just have to accept the grand jury. Okay, here's my problem. Why don't we fucking know? Yeah. Flat out, why don't we fucking know? Well, you know, for the uh, same could it possibly be there. that could it possibly be that they were arresting reporters from the Washington Post? Could that be a part of this? Mm-hmm. Of this? Oh, oh well, we don't know. Yeah. I well, think, that's just I like there are the American people. We have a right to fucking know. We do. But you know, it's it's it's. I can't remember who said it, but uh, isn't it uh, Heidemann's uncertainty principle? We can never truly know anything. Right. Yeah. So. And stuff, but I mean, just just take a look at the uh, the number of, of convictions that you get turned over every year in this country, mm-hmm. and stuff. People who are convicted of crimes, you know, by a jury of their peers on evidence, and then all of a sudden it's overturned because you know they find out that you know some evidence wasn't allowed, or some witnesses were lying, or you know whatever. The the truth is not the truth anymore. Right. And unfortunately, and unfortunately, in this country, you are guilty until proven innocent. This is true. You know, it's, oh, you're innocent until proven guilty. Okay, then what do I have to sit in jail awaiting trial for if I'm innocent? I am in jail. Right. You know, why Why do I have to be in jail while I'm awaiting trial? You know, well, you might run away. Well, what does it matter if I run away? I'm innocent, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So. Uh-huh. And on top of it all, okay. This is the fucking worst. Okay, this is the worst. Okay. I can't find the Star Wars Christmas special on YouTube anymore. Oh. My. God. Are they even going to show it this year? Uh, Maybe I, that's why. We were, we were... After this phone call, we were planning on getting high and watching it. Ah, well, there you go. But not now, huh? Fucking, fucking thanks, Obama. Really? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, that's like I started noticing that there are things that should be on YouTube yeah. that aren't. Like there was, I was looking, sometime during the 1980s, the fairly early 1980s, there was a show on Showtime or HBO or something like that called uh, Consumer Reports. Yes. And they did a show on NutraSweet, Aspartame. Right. And we're saying that when it was first released, that something like 10% of the people who took it suffered coma and death. Right. And stuff like that, and that it absolutely causes brain damage and, you know, all this other stuff. And, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing you should be able to find on YouTube, and it's nowhere to be found anywhere on the Internet, that information. Yeah. And so people are like, oh, my God, you know, the – the uh, you know web, they they got rid of web neutrality so now there's you know the you're not going to be able to find the truth on the web anymore. Well, this has been going on for a long time, people. There are things that you should be able to find on the internet if there are you know trillions of web pages. That information should be out there somewhere, but it can't be found because it's you know being edited. People are you know big big money is saying hey you need to take this information off the internet or we're going to sue you and then boom it disappears and you know yes but now what 
that is, though, is that is instead of the new evil that we are trying to stop, it's just the same old evil that we have always had. Yeah. Where somebody gets a check so that something doesn't show up. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yep, it's a uh it's a uh, it's a fucked up world. And 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 hence, you know, the the reason for dying generation. It's we're exactly. trying to talk to people about how fucked up the world is now. In fact, here's an interesting thing. Watching Anchorman 2, right? Okay. I had had a discussion with somebody, it might have been you a while back, about how the news isn't the news anymore. Uh, I believe we had that discussion, yeah, because I found some old Walter Cronkite footage. Yeah, Yeah. during during the 50s and stuff, the news was the news. It was very even-handed. It was, it was balanced and this, that, and the other. And then all of a sudden it turned into sensationalism and, and uh, you know, totally slanted to one or other uh, point of view and stuff like this. And if you watch Anchorman 2, that's what that movie is about. Yeah. It's like a satirical slap at the news as we have it today and stuff. And, and, you know, you can, you can, you can, you know, watch six or seven different news programs on different, you know, networks and stuff like that. And the same story is, is reported five or six different ways. Well, actually, even funnier, though, is that you will find the same story across, and it seems more like about local news and things like that, you will Mm -hmm. find the same story reported in exactly the same way over and over again. And do you know why? Uh, Because that's what was sent out, and you report this. Because that's what was sent out, because that's... A long time ago, and this happened sometime during the 70s, the Associated Press became the authority of the news, and so most news outlets get their news from the Associated Press. And that's why it's almost all reported exactly the same, almost word for word, is because it's coming from the Associated Press and not being sought out and, and researched and, and written by individual news people. Well, all our news is actually just coming from AP. Mm-hmm. You know? And so that's why you get a lot of that. Yeah. And so it's also like the discussion we had, and I don't know if we had it on the show or not one time, about how, you know, talk to your friends and neighbors and see how many of them have actually been a victim of violent crime. Uh-huh. And then, and then see what percentage of the news is about violent crime and right. see if the percentages match up. And I guarantee you they won't. Uh, along with child molestation, that's always a huge one, which yeah. to me sounds like a big fucking witch hunt. Well, that, know, that's actually gone by the wayside lately because uh, you don't hear um, much of that going on and stuff. I mean, they even took to catch a predator off the air. So it's oh, like that's really? not the hot sub yeah, that's not the hot subject anymore. They've gotten that into the public consciousness enough to where it's not the hot story anymore and it's just it's just white noise and so they've moved on to, you know, other things. Uh-huh. Yeah. And stuff. And yeah, it's a it's a big huge witch hunt. In fact my my, my uh I, I became very concerned when To Catch a Predator came on because it wasn't bad enough that they were pretty much entrapping these people. Right. But then the people were being charged legally with indecency with a child when there was no child involved. But they were right. going to jail and sometimes prison for indecency with a child when there was no child involved. It was a grown adult talking to them. And the other thing that bothered me about the show is they never showed the conversation that was had. Right. Right. You know, they never show the conversation leading up to come over to my house. Okay? They never uh-huh. show the way in which that uh, adult probably talked to them in a way that was, you know, entrapping and enticing that a teenage girl probably never would. Uh-huh. You know? And so, yeah, it, it's a big witch hunt and stuff. And, you know, are there pedophiles out there? Are there child molesters out there? Sure there are. But... There probably aren't any more today. 
of which if we find them, we convict them, we send them to jail. I am. That's one of the that's one of the areas where I'm really okay with the death penalty on that one. Yeah. Along with rape. Yeah. You know? Just get this human garbage out of society and that's it. And if we made a mistake, I'm sorry. Well, my opinion, my opinion on this is, is, is I'm against the death penalty uh, for it, specifically for this reason. These people are obviously sick, mentally ill, severely. Right. You know, to not only think that way, but to also feel compelled to take action. Right. And so, I mean, you'd basically be putting mentally ill people to death. Yes, but, you know, but it has psychologists have gone over and over again that there is nothing that we are going to be able to do to help them or get them over these compulsions. Yeah. So in which case, what is keeping them around helping? Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, you know. They're, they're severely mentally ill people, and I don't think that, you know, we should be killing the mentally ill. I mean, if we are, I mean, you know, for one, you know, the prescription drug industry goes under. And if you think that gas prices are going to collapse the economy, wait until the prescription uh, psychological drug, uh, you know, uh, thing dries up because we've just taken all the mentally ill people and killed them. Right. You know, because it, it, you know, it starts with that. It starts with, okay, this person's mentally ill because they're a child molester, let's kill them. And then it's, this person's mentally ill because they torture animals, let's kill them. This person is mentally ill because they rape, let's kill them. And then it starts getting down to, you know, oh, you're just mentally ill. You know, there's no reason why you should be a burden on society. Let's just exterminate you. Okay, yes, but why does it have to go there? Seriously. Because it, because why it will. Why does it have to go there? Why can it just not stay with, this person is a danger, there is nothing we're going to do to, to help or correct or rehabilitate this person? Mm-hmm. And still there? Sorry, I'm still here. Huh? Okay, I didn't hear you. You stopped talking. Well, the point I made was just absolutely brilliant, and you'll just have to listen to the show to find out what it is now. Sorry, okay. I can't repeat it. I just, yep. you know, I can't go through. It was too intricate and too nuanced, and, it, you know, it, as I was speaking it, angels descended mm-hmm. and, and began to sing. Mm-hmm. And not to mention the fact that we... They sang really awful, but still. <laughs> and not to mention the fact that we have poor redundancy. So that we have what? Have poor redundancy. Yes. Let me say it again. We have poor redundancy. We absolutely have poor redundancy. <laughs> Never will we repeat ourselves on this show. Yeah, right. Never will we repeat ourselves on this show. I'm sorry, what did you say? I said we will never repeat ourselves <laughs> on this show. Never. This is Never. our guarantee to you. Yeah. Now here's 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 another thing that 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 that, that I mean is 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 sort of associated. And that is that we are taking drug offenders, nonviolent drug offenders. Yes. Drug users even dealers who have committed no crime, you know, violent crime, other, you know, they, they've sold drugs. And we are putting them in prison with violent criminals yes. who have committed violent crimes. Why, why are we doing that? Uh, oh, you, well, you know, it really depends on the time frame that we're talking about, because if we're talking more now, because uh, we have a privatized prison system, and there is money to be made by filling those fucking cells. Yeah, but they could fill cells in a medium or minimum security prison, 
I mean, because if some guy is on a drug charge and he's only going to be in for a year, does he really need to be in a maximum security prison? No, he doesn't. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to do that, why don't we take all those business guys, you know, like the guy who did the pyramid schemes and stuff like that, and put them in with violent criminals? Yeah. You know, because they've done more harm to society than these people selling marijuana. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we now, now, thank God for pot, for pot legalization, okay? Mm-hmm. Totally down with that. But that does bring up the paradox that a lot of people went, went to jail for what a lot of rich people, rich white people, are going to make a lot of money off of now. Yeah. Legally. Yep. Well, I just, uh, yeah, I just, I just think it's wrong. I mean, you have these nonviolent criminals being put in with violent criminals, mm-hmm. you know, and stuff, and it just, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And I, th- and I think it's interesting. Have you ever read Crime and Punishment? No. You know what it's about? What's that? I think I lost it. Do you know what it's about? Do I know what it's about? No. Yeah, well, it's basically about, you know, at its core is about, uh, you know, taking people and putting them in a a uh, society, meaning prison, where they become, you know, even better or worse criminals, uh-huh. you know, and stuff. And it just, to me, it used to be, it used to be the prisons were about rehabilitation. And punishment, you know, yeah, you're being you're being contained in a prison, but now right. they try and make it. I mean, there used to be one person to a cell, and now there's four people to a cell the same size, you know. And it's like they're 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 specifically trying to make this the most violent, dangerous thing you know you can be in, and there's no rehabilitation at all being done. Uh huh. You know. So, there you go. Yes, that is true, and that should have been fixed a long time ago. But, but you know, if you put that through to a vote, most people will be like, well, well, it's supposed to be a punishment. It's supposed to be like that. And go ahead and get ass raped. It doesn't make a difference. Yeah. And there you go. Because you've committed a crime. Yeah. Yeah, and I just, to me, it doesn't make any sense. And the thing is, yeah. the, part of my point, too, was I think it's interesting that you don't read crime and punishment in school anymore like we used to. You know, they used to, crime and punishment used to be required reading in school. And now it's not. Really? Yes. No, I have and, not uh, read it. I, I had I had a really shitty education. Um, well, you did go to school in America, didn't you? Yes. No, well, there you go. <laughs> that so explains like it right the, there. Any of the classic books or anything like that that I have read, I did not read until I was out of school. Like, you know, any anything like that, I've, I've read on my own. Yeah. You know, like 1984 or. Um, Lord of the Flies, uh, Clockwork Orange, you know, these are all books that after being out of school, I, I looked to them and I got them and I read them. Yeah. Well, a friend of mine made an interesting point about A Clockwork Orange the other day, the book. Yeah. In A Clockwork Orange, the original book, I believe there are 21 chapters. Oh, I can't really recall. It was about it wasn't a long book. It was like 200, 220, 240 yeah. pages, somewhere in there. Now, supposedly, the final chapter of the book is how uh, is his name Alex? Yeah. I don't remember. He uh, learns that, you know, crime is not the right way to go. He, he, he realizes for himself uh, how to be a normal member of society. But then the movie came out, and now if you buy a copy of the book, that last chapter is missing. Really? Because it doesn't because it does not coincide with what Kubrick presented. 
I, I would bet you that I didn't read that chapter in that case. Yeah, either either of I. I didn't even know that until yeah. this friend of mine told me that. I was like, really? He was like, yeah, in the original book, there's a final chapter that does not appear in any copies that are printed today. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, wow, that's a damn shame because that's, you know, that's, you know, kind of, isn't that kind of the point of the book? You know? And stuff. And it's just, yeah, there are a lot of books that, that we used to read in school that are missing now because they don't want us to have those ideas in our head, like 1984, like Animal Farm, right. uh, things like that. Kids today just aren't reading those. And, I mean, those are very important books that speak about uh, keeping keeping control of the government. Right. And now they don't teach those in school anymore because the government doesn't want, you know, kids thinking those ideas. Mm-hmm. You know, and stuff, and it's just, it, it's a damn shame it's sad. So, you know, I tried to make sure that my kids read, you know, some of the important books and stuff. Right. You know, and uh, to make sure that they, you know, were completely fucked up and, and not, you know, a normal member of society. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had heard an interview with, uh, there's a podcast called The Nerdist. Mm-hmm. And they get some really good people. Uh, I, I'll be fucked if I know how they get the kind of people that they get. That they get really good people on their show. Uh, mm-hmm. They had they had Michael Ironside on, like just last week. You mean the guy whose head explodes in scanners? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And he's basically the tough asshole in everything he plays. Yeah. And. And he's he's just like he 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 is so not he is so not that. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I, I can't help how <laughs> how they want to portray me and you know the parts they want to give me. I got to keep working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So he takes those. But one of the things that he said that I thought was really cool that his father did with him and that he's doing with his own children is that basically. You can stay up as long as you want, as long as you're reading. Yeah. You know, so you still you still kind of have a bedtime. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be in bed at this time, and then from there, if if you want to stay awake longer than that, you need to be reading. Yeah. Well, I had an interesting experience as a child because I was a big reader. <clears throat> read a lot uh, when I was very young, like eight, nine, ten years old. I read, read, read. And yeah. uh, one of my favorite films is Grizzly. Uh, if you, people haven't seen this, you really need to see it because it's, it's an awesome uh, Animals Gone Wild uh, horror film from the 70s. You, you actually read the book? I read the book. I went After we saw the movie, I went to the bookstore and bought the book, right? So I get yeah. home, and I'm reading the book, and I'm reading it straight through. And I'm like about an hour and a half into it, my dad calls upstairs, Hey! Why don't you take a break from reading and come down here and watch some television? You're going to ruin your eyes with all that reading. <laughs> yes. Okay. A very uh, progressive man. Isn't that isn't it poignant? <laughs> but I was like, but I was like, wow. And that's you know, and you know, people just don't read anymore. I mean, I'm glad the you know the the uh, the uh, you know advent of the. Uh, the Kindle and the Nook and ebook readers and stuff like that because people are reading a lot more than they used to. Uh, right. But for, I mean, in my daughter's generation and my son's generation, almost, I mean, they read, they read quite a lot, uh, but almost none of their friends read. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it was almost an embarrassment if you're a reader. You know, you're a bookworm and, and uh, you know, and, uh, you know, why, why read the book when you just watch the movie? <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. And I just remember, like, well, I, said, okay, I read that, a now, lot. Now, that goes back to Grizzly, because Grizzly could not have been, like, a, a real book. Could no, it? it was. It had no, to it was a movie novelization. Yes, it was. Yeah. But, you know, I also, you know, around that time, you know, whenever I was eight years old, I read The Martian Chronicles. Yeah. 
you know, and stuff like that, and used to read all kinds of books. And, you know, like I said, my kids read all kinds of books. My daughter's favorite book when she was younger was uh, Wrinkle in Time. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, stuff, and it's just, you know, and, and we, we we try to, you know, read our kids' books. You know, you know, people read, you know, children's books that are, you know, strictly for entertainment, not for education. And so whenever we were reading our kids' children's books, we had them read things like, the Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein, right? You, you know, which teaches a child respect for for you know their parents and taking care of them and stuff. Stuff like the Lorax, which teaches you, you know, uh, the importance of the environment, and things like uh, the Phantom Toll Booth, which teaches you the importance of learning, right? And stuff like that. And so we always, you know, instead of just reading, you know, Billy's Red, you know, Wagon, or the Runaway Pancake. You know, and stuff like that. We tried to read things that would sort of like fill them with the ideas that, you know, at least I thought uh, were important to have as a human being. Right. You know. And stuff. And, and you know, some parents do that, but some parents don't. Uh, a lot of parents yeah. actually don't. They just, you know, they're reading like, you know, uh, you know, they, a lot of uh, parents read Dr. Seuss still, and those are a lot of a lot of the Dr. Seuss books are important uh, books to read to children, right? Because uh, he was very much uh, about the message as much as you know making you giggle and stuff. But but a lot of children's books today are just you know crap uh, that mean nothing uh, right. that have these very small. Uh, you know, lessons in it, like, you know, be a good friend, you know, eat your peas because it's good for you, you know, type stuff rather than, you know, larger social issues that make them a better member of society. Uh -huh. You know. Well, I don't go. know. Not, not having kids, I've never, I've never gone through books in that kind of perspective, you know. Yeah. Uh, I I spent an awful lot of time reading um, novelizations, you know, because I couldn't get out to every fucking movie. I read mm -hmm. I read I read Star Wars before I ever saw it. Yeah, you know, because um, I didn't know when I was going to see it or if, yeah. if I was going to have to wait till it came on television to see it. And I wanted to, I wanted I wanted that story, so I found the book and I read it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I read. I read The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes' Smarter Brother. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I read That's that. That's pretty funny. Read That's 2001. Funny. Although yeah. that wasn't a novelization, you know, but... Yeah. I read 2001 before I saw it. If it was coming out in the movies, there was a book there somewhere. Yeah, there there was. It was very popular during the seventies and eighties for that to be the case. Whereas now you're seeing a lot more movies that are based on actual books. Yeah, not great books, but books nonetheless. Well, that's how it used to be as well. You know, there were there were always movies that were based on on books. Yeah, <clears throat> you know. Yes, there were. Uh -huh. And that's and a little I bit of movie a, history. I read a lot of those crappy ones. So, um, yeah, movies, movie history. Uh, you need yeah, like, a lot of really, really bad Christmas movies. Yeah. Yeah, I, I felt weird the other night because I'm 49 years old and I was sitting here watching Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, I just, I can't help myself, you know? Yeah. It's like it's like I, you have to watch it. Well, she's she's actually watched so many that when I go to Netflix, a big banner pops up and says, "Why don't you just admit you're gay?" <laughs> <laughs> like, well, Netflix starts popping up nothing but Christmas movies. <laughs> uh, Christmas movies and and things that are either brawny or bear related. Yeah. Yeah. You know, bear related, bear related yeah. movies. Well, there you go, Grizzly. <laughs> um, 
there is a good documentary on Netflix right now. Um, I am Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Ooh, which is a an R-rated documentary about Santa Claus. Okay. <laughs> hosted by Mick Foley. Okay. How can you not win with that? Yeah. Definitely. That's 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 just it. That's that's the kind of Christmas special I need. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Now they're talking to me. <laughs> now I yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, well, I'm just waiting for my favorite to come on, and that's uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Watch it every year. Yeah. And then, of course, my uh, my family's tradition for the last five or six years, which is watching The Nightmare Before Christmas on Christmas Eve. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So that's always good stuff. We watched It's a Wonderful Life last year. Mm-hmm. I forget where the hell I had to find it, though. I had to go all over the place to try to find that freaking movie. Yeah, it usually showed on one of the networks, but it isn't, you know, it's usually like, you know, five or six days before Christmas. Yeah. It used to be on Christmas Eve, but now they, you know, they have to show, you know, they'll have to show the Frozen Christmas special and. I. Stuff still, like that on Christmas Eve. I still personally insist that George Bailey had a very shitty life. He did. And just because everybody else had a good life because he was in it, he was still probably better off with suicide. Probably, yeah. Yeah, that was really Enough of those people's shit. <laughs> you know, who needs it? Who needs it after a while? I would just be done. Yeah, well, you know, somebody has to play Job. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody has to, to be the uh, the character at, at the center of uh, those who walk away from Amalus. Have you ever read that? by Ursula K. Le Guin. No. It's about this utopian society where everything's perfect, except whenever people turn 18, they're told that in order for everything to be perfect, there is one person in their society that is kept somewhere in absolute agony and suffering 24 hours a day. How does that work? I don't know. Read it. It's good stuff. First look at it win is awesome. But uh you know, it's it's it, you know, that's how I feel sometimes. I'm just having a hard time figuring out uh how that makes everything better for everybody else. It just does. It's like some sort of trade off. Yeah. You know. And stuff, so so, yes, GoPro, and I'm going to start the cat show. So, yeah. The cat show. Cool. Well, I hate to say this, but it's about time to wrap things up. UFC is getting ready to come on TV, and i got to watch some guys beat the crap out of each other. Okay. Good. Okay. So, you have anything to pimp? Uh, well, Dying Generation, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, just do a search for Dying Generation. You'll come up with our Facebook page. Go there and like it, or no one will ever love you. Um, so do that. If you have any kind of complaints or anything else about anything we say on the show, uh, write us at dying at undead cow, uh, dying at undeadcow.com, uh, and we will be sure to read that on the air and most likely mock you for it. Um, you can also find us on Twitter at Dying Generation. Uh, also, watch Bob's Dirty Shorts. You'll love it. Trust me. Yeah. And tell all your friends about it. It's a completely goofy show. It's, it's something that you will not see anywhere else. 
And you can find that on YouTube at Undead Cow Film, where you can also find the video portion of this podcast as well. That's about all I got for right now. All right. Well, I just want to pimp my books, uh, Dreaded Friday and Other Tales, a collection of short stories, uh, The Alex Ran Red, a horror detective novel, and The Spy and Mom Clothing, uh, written under the name of Maxwell Robeson, all available on Amazon.com in paperback and on Kindle. Also, The Haunted Trailer, uh, my first film that I co-wrote with my brothers, and it is out on DVD now. Also, look for my brothers, uh, Tim and Chuck, uh, movie they wrote called Conjoined. It is now out on DVD, and coming soon is the 80s slasher film, Getting School. So that's about it. All right. Well, that'll be it for this week of Dying Generation. See you next week. I am Bunny Williams, and he is... Steven Scott Norfolk. Be good or be careful. <laughs>